Okay, let's see what's in the box. All right, so we have the usual trash. A couple of pieces wrapped in plastic. That looks like the shield. We have a battery charger, which by the way, is the same battery charger that came with my saw. So two identical battery chargers. Now if you buy, this is the one for the, for the cobalt 40 volt saw. To buy the battery and the charger is about $189. So when you buy the weed eater, you get a battery, which is right here, and you also get the charger. So you're paying, uh, I paid $169 for the weed eater, so I'm getting the uh, same charger and battery that you would buy for $189 together, plus the weed eater. So that by itself is uh, justification for buying the weed eater. Let's open the battery up. All right, it looks like the same battery that came with my saw, so let's compare. That's the saw battery. That's the weed eater battery. Same exact battery. And so far, this battery's been great. I used the saw eight or nine times. It's done a great job for me so far. All right, so there's the charger and the battery. The battery goes in the charger upside down. Notice the cobalt symbols upside down. So, two identical batteries and chargers. So that's one of the reasons to buy the uh, 40 volt cobalt weed eater because this battery and charger I can also use with my saw. All right, so you get a handle. There's the handle right there. And of course the weed eater. Here's a couple of manuals that go with the weed eater. So the weed eater is folded up. So I guess you, uh, you do that. You extend it, put in a couple of uh, screws right here. All right, so screw that in. So let's get an up close look at this. So this is the hinge right here. So when it when I first pulled it out, the uh, bottom side and top side were folded together. So I unfolded it, put in those two screws. So on this side of the hinge, that seam closed up nicely. On the other side of the hinge, I've tightened this screw down almost to the point where it's stripping. And you notice this uh, seam right there is not closed up. Very likely, I'm gonna get a heavy duty wire tie and put around here just to reinforce this area where the screws are. All right, so, where the battery goes in right here so I've already got the battery for my saw charged up so let's go ahead and put that battery into the weed eater so I think it probably goes in right side up just like that all right if you want to pull the battery out push the top button the battery pops right out there you go so both batteries have a battery power indicator. You push that button, you can see this battery is almost dead. All right, so I'm gonna have to charge it up. The battery that I've got for my saw, I charged up today. If I push my power button, you can see I've got four green bars, all right? Put it in. I think you pretty much just push the button and turn it on. Yep. Okay, so before I crank it up and run it, let's put the guard on. So in the manual bag on the back side, there's a couple of screws. So I'm gonna take these screws out. Let's see where they go. All right. So on the back of this right here, let's see if I can get a close picture. There's two screw holes right there. I'm pretty sure that's where those screws go. And I have not read the instruction manual, but I'm just gonna sort of guess here. I imagine this goes probably like that. 
Okay, the guard was sort of hard to get on there. I had to stop and work with it for a minute so it should butt up against the bottom just like that. So that's what it looks like from the top. And then you put the screws in, which should be fairly straightforward. One screw there, one screw there, and tighten them down. Okay, the guard's on, that took a couple of minutes, but um, it's secured in place really well. So now let's put the handle on. And that looks pretty good. So you can loosen this if you wanna move it up or down, depend depending on if someone's taller or shorter. So if I wanna turn it on, you gotta push that button in right there and pull the trigger right there, okay? So I'm gonna push the button with my thumb Pull the trigger. Turns on. Okay, so this button right here is a speed control. Right now it's turned to one. You can't see it, but there's actually a, a one imprinted on the plastic in there. So when this slider is pushed to the top of the unit, it's on slow speed. If you want it on fast speed, push it down, and then there's actually a two that shows up imprinted on the plastic. So let's put it back in slow speed on a one. Let's turn it on and watch it run. All right, let's put it on high speed. So I'm gonna push that down. So again, the, it'll run faster, but the battery won't last as long. Oh yeah, it's definitely a lot faster in two. Okay, so let's talk about the string and how you, how you put new string into it. Let me show you the easy way to do the string. Okay, so let's look at how to put string in this thing. All right, so let's start with this white piece. You see there's a hole right there that looks just like that. There's an identical hole on the same side, and those two holes are connected through this chassis, and let me demonstrate that to you. So I'm gonna put string into one of them on this side. I'm going to push it all the way through and it comes out on the other side, okay? So, your string is going to go all the way through this thing. See? I can slide it back and forth. Alright? So we're not going to put the string in now. But once we get this put on the weed eater, we are going to feed our string through that hole right there, okay? Uh, which way does it go? It goes that way. All right, you can, you can see when you put it on, you'll see what I'm talking about. So let's put the cap on. You got this cap, and this cap has to fit flush against, around the white piece or against the white piece. You just keep spinning it until it fits flush against this white piece, all right? Now you put that into this thing, and this is the, this is the trimmer head assembly. So notice, there's arrows right there and right there. Those two arrows need to line up, all right? And when they line up, that little hole I showed you a second ago is exposed. So when you put this thing on here, you feed your string into that hole. Don't do it beforehand because if you do it, you'll have a hard time getting this put on there. So let's put it on and then let me show it to you. All right, so you got these tabs that have to go in the right spot. Push it on and you hear it snap in place. All right. So you feed your string, Let's see if I can get a, find a better way to see this. You feed your string into this and you hit that hole that I showed you a minute ago. And your string is gonna go all the way through and see it come out the other side. All right, see, I can pull my string back and forth like that. All right, so then also on here, there's an arrow that points in a counterclockwise direction. What that means is you push this thing in and you start turning it counterclockwise. And that's, as you turn that, it's gonna roll your string in and your string is gonna be under tension after you, after you push it and turn it one time, it's gonna be under tension so I can no longer pull my string both sides. All right, so you just keep turning this until you roll all your string in. All right, see that? I'm pulling all my string in. And this is tough to do. I mean, if you, if you don't have some good hand strength, you're gonna have a hard time with this. Um, all right, so a little bit more. 
Well, I'm gonna stop right there because I wanna show you something else. But what you notice is I've got a different amount of strength out on each one. So when this thing turns on and starts spinning, it's gonna hit this blade right here. Let's see if you can see this blade, okay? When you first get this weed eater, there's gonna be tape on both sides of that blade. You have to take that tape off. It doesn't tell you that in my owner's manual. I just saw the tape on and realized that was gonna be a problem. But uh, you pull your tape off because your tape is covering the cutting edge. And what's gonna happen is when you turn this thing on and you've got excess string on it, Let's see, let's pull this off. All right, that tape is off. When you have excess string, that string is gonna hit this cutting edge and it's gonna cut the string and it's gonna make sure that both are the same length. So that excess string is gonna get cut off. So let me turn it on and I'm gonna demonstrate that to you. All right. So let's put my battery in. Now watch when I turn it on. Yeah, that didn't work off. Alright. Now you see, I hope you see now, my string is the same length on both sides. By the way, make sure you wear your glasses when you do this because these little pieces of string right there will fly off and they will hit you in the eye, okay? So, um, don't do what I'm doing. <laughs> when I just turned this on, I didn't have the glasses on and I should have had the glasses on. So when you turn this on, do that so that these little pieces of string, and it's not just gonna be one piece off each end that cuts off. I think like five pieces of it came off and flew everywhere. And I was lucky it didn't hit me in the eye. So when you do that, make sure that, um, you have your glasses on. So anyhow, take the tape off your cutting edge and you may need to even sharpen up your cutting edge a little bit. I usually use steel weed eater string because it's a lot stronger. I don't know if you can see this, but if we put the two side by side, the blue one is 0.08 and the orange one is 0.095. This is much better string. So I'm gonna see if this string will work with that weed eater. Um, so let's, uh, in fact, let's do that right now. Let's go ahead and test that. Okay, so I cut a piece of steel string that's the same length as the string that came with it, all right? So let's see if we can get the steel string to wind up in these channels and make sure that, because this string is thicker, let's make sure it works, all right? So first step, let's put it all back together. Make sure the arrows are lined up right there, those two arrows, all right? Put it on. And again, when those arrows are lined up properly, if those two arrows are lined up properly, that means that on the side, these holes are exposed where you ought to be able to just feed your string straight in. All right. Snap it in place. Arrows are lined up. So I'm going to sort of turn it a little bit. And the string has to go in counterclockwise, so it has to go in that direction, all right? So, and I'm, I'm not even really gonna look in there. I'm just gonna see if it works. All right, so it worked. The string came out the other side. All right, so now I'm gonna pull my string out until it's the same length on both, both sides. Or pull it through, I'm sorry. It's almost there. This is sort of hard to do with this uh, weed eater turned upside down. A little bit more. Uh oh. I hate dealing with weed eater string. You're never going to get it perfect, okay? Just do the best you can. All right, so now the string has gone all the way through. Let's start turning this thing counterclockwise. So you got to push it in and turn it. All right. go so the string is in so as this thing moves counterclockwise this string is going to hit that blade and that blade is going to trim it to the right length so now i'm going to put my glasses on let's demo that to you all right here we go so after 
after about 20 turns, the string is exactly the right length. Okay, if you want to get more weed eater string out, you see how my string has gotten sort of short here because I've been I've been weeding for about 20 minutes. All right, so to get it out, you got to bump it on the bottom. All right, so watch this. Turn it on. Now you can see how more string came out. See when you bump it it releases more string. So I could bump it again, and I would get enough string to come out to the edge of the blade. So let's do that. All right. So on the second bump, the string came all the way out to the edge of the blade. All right. The only other thing I can say about it is that, um, you know, it, it's decent. It's not made for heavy duty applications. Um, it's cheap. If you buy a gas powered weed eater now, you're going to pay $300. I got this for $169, so I got it for roughly half price. Um, I don't anticipate this lasting probably more than three years, I'm guessing, at the outside. And if you have to replace the motor, by the way, I've been looking on Cobalt's website or the Lowe's website, and uh, the Cobalt actually has their own website. I have not found anywhere to, uh, to buy a motor to put on it, so I don't even know if you can replace this motor if it wears out. Surely you can. I mean, I'm sure that's happened before. Um, yeah, so that's about it. It's a decent weed eater. It just don't expect the power you're going to get out of a gas-powered weed eater. Okay, I forgot to talk about the warranty that you get with this uh, weed eater. So um, if you go watch my, my video I did on the Cobalt Chainsaw, um, I talked about the warranty in there a little bit, and it's the same thing. Um, what they warranty is, they, they warranty the product except for normal wear and tear. So whatever wears out as part of normal wear and tear, they're not going to replace. So let's say that tomorrow your pole breaks in half. Well, they're probably going to warranty that. If the shield breaks off or your handle breaks off, or maybe the, uh, the switch quits working, they're going to warranty that. Um, they're not going to warranty your motor. They're probably not going to warranty your battery because your battery, you know, if it breaks in the first week or two, you got it, they probably will give you a replacement. If you go in six months later and say, okay, my battery's not working now, you're out of luck. They're not going to replace that. They're not going to warranty that. So um, if you get it and you're not happy with it, take it back pretty soon. So the, the warranty is covered in here. And you've also got a manual for the battery and the charger. And all it talks about is they'll warranty things that are not covered under or that are not part of normal wear and tear, which just means the plastic piece. That's about it. Um, also, you may notice I've got a lot of cobalt stuff. I used to not buy anything cobalt. I really thought it was a cheap brand. A couple of things made me reconsider that because 
uh, number one, I've been trying to get away from using oil and gas. I hate keeping separate oil and gas mixture and I don't like mixing it together. So I bought the Cobalt um, uh, hammer brushless drill thing. Works pretty good. I've had it for I think three years, maybe two years. Works great, haven't had any trouble. I got the Cobalt drill and that's a 24 volt drill and this battery, take it off and put it on the 24 volt hammer drill. Works great, haven't had any trouble. I've got the uh, Cobalt 40 volt chainsaw I bought. It's been great, haven't had any trouble out of it and I've been using it for I guess a month and a half or so now and I think I've ran it through 10 different discharge and recharge cycles. Um, I just bought a, a cobalt pole saw which I'm getting ready to do a video on that and it's working great. I really like it. I've got a uh, cobalt toolbox you can see right there. Haven't had any trouble out of it. So you know two years ago I would have told you don't buy cobalt. Now I really don't see anything wrong with their products. You know their electric products like the weed eater, the saw, all these really the the value in those is the battery and as long as the batteries last then the products are worth using and the batteries the 40 volt line i don't know about the 80 volt line or 24 volt line well 24 volt is what's on here but um aside from the the 20 aside from that i haven't used 24 volts or 80 volts on any of their power tools so i can't really speak about that but the 40 volt line i've had really good success with and don't have any problems with it so i wouldn't hesitate to buy that again Again, on the weed eater though, if uh, you need heavy duty work or if you're an industrial mower or somebody that does industrial landscaping, this is not what you need. Go and buy steel. And, and steel comes with a much better warranty. But if you're a homeowner and you just wanna maintain your property, this should do a fine job. All right, thanks again for watching.